joining us now from our studios in Cape Town uh, for review of the recent news from the South African mining uh, landscape is Peter Major. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for making the time to join us uh, this morning. Uh, perhaps the first thing we should get into is what did you think were the key themes that played out during the course of this year? Boy, it's a pretty long list because most of the key things that played up this year are negative on the mining side. The only positive thing for mining in this country this year is probably the weakening rand. Um, but that's not enough to counter out the five month platinum strike, the continued fall in almost all commodity prices in dollar terms, and a continued confusion and delay in mining legislation, you know, finality of the minerals bill, uh, confusion over the amendments, and the continued delay that it still takes to get a a prospecting license, a mining license, a water use license. Um, but you know what? There's still two and a half weeks in the year. If we can get rid of the negative things in this two and a half weeks, we can make a good case for a lot of optimism next year. If everybody in this country says, let's do our part to make mining an attractive investment next year, it can happen. Because with the weak RAND, the fantastic ore deposits, the many abandoned mines and operating mines we've got, this country could do better in mining next year than any other country on the planet if we all work together. Peter, one is struck by the Eskom uh, situation at the moment where the government, the tone of the government's response has suddenly moved to another gear. They seem to be saying, we really accept this is urgent. We're going to have to do things differently, although you might disagree with what they're trying to do. At least there's a, a new urgency. We want something like that in mining, don't we? We want government to accept that investors are going elsewhere, that the environment really has been uncertain and unfriendly. One wants a signal as much as anything, don't we? You're exactly right, David. And we're not trying to poke fun at anybody. We're not pointing fingers, and we don't want to demonize the ANC. But the fact is, if you're the general of an army, and the army is suffering one defeat after another, after another, over many, many years, you have to accept responsibility. And when you're leading a country, whether it's Republicans or the Democrats in America, or the Tories or Labor in the UK, or the ANC or the Nats here, it's a big responsibility. And yes, you get all the perks. You know, they, they get to spend a trillion rand a year on whatever they think is best. And so they've been in power 20 years. They've got total say over where that money goes. And things aren't working. So they do have to do things different. And that's just life. It's, it's not that the world's looking at the ANC or pointing fingers particularly at them. But they've got to accept responsibility. And yes, they determine the tone and the direction of the rest of the country. And the masses take their cue from the leadership here. And they've got to get in front. They've, they've got to be a Napoleon, Alexander the Great. They've got to lead by example. And they've got to take us out of this wilderness. And, and, and it starts with Eskom. And it starts with mining. And they've got to stop demonizing the mining companies and the mining industry. And, they, and they've got to depoliticize and get rid of ideology in all these peristatals. And it's, it can only run on meritocracy. That's how we're going to fix ESCOM, that everything there is on meritocracy. That's how we're going to fix all these peristatals, government and industry. It can only run on meritocracy, not ideology, not religion, not anything else. Meritocracy. Peter, this uncertainty that you're talking about, is this something that is uh, most likely going to keep uh, companies uh, divesting out of South Africa? This is not something that we've just seen in the mining landscape. We've seen it uh, in other sectors as well. But what I'm asking is this, will, is, it going, is, is it most likely uh, going to continue next year? Man, it's tough and it, it's competitive. And again, it's not that the world's picking on the ANC or that there's counter-revolutionaries trying to undermine our government. It's not that at all. The fact is, it's more competitive in the world today, economically, than it's ever been in the history of man. You have 200 countries that have wholeheartedly adopted capitalism, with all its evils, with all the negatives. And I don't like capitalism. I'm not for it. But the whole 200 countries on this planet have adopted capitalism. And so they're all competing for money. 
And, and I think we can take examples from the states. If you look how competitive the American states are at getting Asian auto manufacturers to build their plant, or they're even trying to move Volkswagen, German auto manufacturers to build a plant. And one state says, we'll give you free land. Another says, we'll give you free land and no taxes for 10 years. Another state says, we'll give you free land, infrastructure, no taxes 10 years, and reduced utility rates. So you look at how these 50 states in America are competing with each other to get foreign investment. We've got to do that in this country. We've got to compete with 199 other countries to get foreign investment. So we've got to show them a multitude of attractions to bring their investment dollars here. Well, thanks to Peter Major packing a lot into a brief review there of the mining year. He's a mining analyst at Katie's Corporate Solutions.